and coreless high speed stationary engine part one we saw how the coreless steam engine works and this is in the basement of the Hartshorn curtain roll company which went out of business about 1980 as I recall and this is a actual working high speed coreless stationary engine and because it's run on compressed air there is no uh, chug chug as you would expect out of a steam engine and that is basically because there's no boiler involved and so in a steam locomotive the exhaust is ex exhausted from the cylinders um, into the smokestack and um, there's an exhaust ejector which fits just nicely under the smokestack but not connected to it and so when the pressure of the steam rushes out of the smokestack on a steam locomotive it creates a partial vacuum in what is called the smoke box and there are flues that run all the way through the boiler it's not like a tea kettle and so there so what happens is that on the other end of the boiler there's a firebox and there are flues or uh, rather uh, holes there and so what happens is that being a vacuum in the front of the, of the smoke box uh, it seeks to fill that vacuum so the air rushes in through the bottom of the grates and fans the fire in much the same way if you took a blanket and flipped it at the uh, campfire that you have and that is actually what makes the steam locomotive go chug chug so this is a stationary steam engine and so most of the time the exhaust was uh, exhausted out of a uh, stack on the roof and I can remember as a small child we uh, were on a way to uh, a camp meeting in Lakota which is near Saugatuck Michigan and there was a sawmill that had a steam lo uh, steam there was a sawmill that had a steam uh, engine in it and my dad being a steam fan went in there and I actually saw a coreless stationary steam engine uh, in operation so I happened to be uh, privileged to hear that and see it and so in this next segment we're going to see the uh, stationary steam engine and how it's connected to the uh, line shaft and the machinery that is run off the line shaft. This was for the days, uh, before the days rather, of uh, electric motors, which are now connected to the machinery. But at that time, they ran a big belt over to a central shaft and they had pulleys on there, and every uh, machine was run off from that. Big three cylinder compressor with a 50 horse electric motor. And this would be full of oil smoke. You couldn't hear yourself eat coffee even upstairs. Now it's all run off of a small regenerative blower. <clears throat> oh, okay. So it looks like a turbocharger in some way. Yeah. yeah. Basically like a little trash pump, but yeah. you know, there's no there's no surface contact because okay. they've done some surface work. So there's no wear. Now, this here, the three cylinder, was that a Gardner Denton? Oh, I have no idea. Because it's very similar to the ones that we have in a locomotive. Okay. And that, that put out uh, 1,353 cubic feet of, of uh, air per minute. And as I understand, these outside cylinders here have a low pressure, and then it goes to the inner cooler, and then it goes back into here. And as it actually compresses it up to uh, 150, I, yeah. 200 pounds, whatever you like. So, yeah, it's, just, it's kind of amazing. That's the only thing that put out that much power. Uh, that is, uh, I think it's kind of cool, and I never really noticed it before, that it's set up like a radial airplane engine. So they're slightly offset, so they can all run off the same time. Right. Huh. I'll be... Training company donated the belts, or he paid for it. Oh, okay. Uh, he's about $1,500 worth of belts. 
So now we have two lathes running. Okay. And, yeah, the drill press developed came out. Well, you said they took it out on purpose. No, it was running. Was it earlier? Yeah, it was running this morning. We've got a press running off of it. Running a filer, a belt sander, a grinder, all running off two 25 foot two lengths of line chain. Okay. And so the, before the advent of the electric motors, <clears throat> this was this is how they got their power for everything that they ran off of. Correct. They had all these line shafts running all over the place, which wouldn't please OSHA today too much, but that's oh, what they yeah, have. They, would they would have a connection, wouldn't they? Now this here, see, that used to feed the material through here as the punch uh, punched it out. Okay. Now I wouldn't want to get my fingers caught in any of this stuff particularly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is the lathe here. Yeah, and I don't know why it's not, I don't know where Adam keeps his screwdriver, so. Well, you gotta you gotta improvise, but you gotta improvise. You have to wait till we stop it again. So the the belt, these belts are twisted so that they reverse the direction. Correct. The belts on this side aren't twisted. The belts on that side are twisted okay. so that they're all they're running in the, in the same direction. Okay. So that's what they did instead of a reversing gear right. back then. And here's a lathe too. And look at the open gears. Look at a dangerous outfit. <laughs> hmm. It's not dangerous. It's uh, it's part of Darwin Darwin theory. <laughs> you know, that's what now now I think you don't have to be quite as smart as a machinist because you don't have to be careful. No, yeah. but the people that ran me, they respected the machine. That's what and I mean. You knew it kept the fingers and hands away. Where now yeah, somebody will stick their hand in there. Yeah, so this device up here looks like a is that a that a band saw? Not a band, it's a saw. No, it's, it's a, a file. file. Oh it's a file? It's a file like you use in a pattern shop. Oh I see. This is just a just a regular file. Oh I see. Here's the band saw. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I should have known that. And then that's your that's your grinder there. That's the idler. Oh yeah. Grinder. Now this this came off the Brunswick. That came off the paper mill. This uh, he takes it up to. Uh, off the Buckley, off the Buckley, Buckley, yeah. and they uh, and they use it there. They uh, they blow the whistle. They oh, yeah. blow it off once a year. It's uh, exceptionally loud, like 138 decibels. Wow. And audible for over eight miles. You ever been up there when they had the salute of the whistles? No. That's really I've something never here. Been up there at all. It's quite it's quite a quite a place. I'd like to go. I guess that's coming up pretty quick now, where they have that. Uh, He's going to take them up there as well. Yeah. But he had them someplace uh, down in southern Michigan, too, and uh, blowing the whistle. So it's actually this building was reconstructed around that engine. Okay. I and mean, all the pillars that the flywheel supported on and all the trusses that they put up to take out the interior walls were all positioned and organized so to display that engine. Mm -hmm. And the thing that used to be a motel or a hotel. Yeah, a rooming. Uh, I think it actually was a storefront before that. Right, yeah. And there were three sections of, of buildings, and there was a restaurant. Right. And then it was purchased out and turned into a boarding house and and some yeah. other kind of this yeah, had their place. <laughs> yeah, they don't want to talk about. Don't want to talk about that one. No. This was in the red light district. Yeah. Outside. Yeah. Well, that explains it. <laughs> So you can see where the windows are. Oh yeah. The windows in the little wall. Yeah, the 
guess if you're in a red light district, you don't really need a lot of room to spread No, you, you wouldn't want windows. <laughs> if you want a lot of room in the rooms to spread out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh.